Woman had just started the car when a 30-minute countdown appeared on the car's center console. The woman, with her years of experience, realized that something dangerous was happening. She reminded the children in the back not to move. Then the woman asked her husband to check the car for anything suspicious. Soon the husband got a picture, but what they didn't expect was that the new car they bought yesterday had been tampered with today. Two anti-tank mines had been installed under the car. That is to say, a roll of the window and opening of the door or even a sudden reduction in the weight of the car body bombs will be detonated. All they can do now is to stay in the car quietly. Suddenly, the woman noticed a flashing light in front of the transmission. She carefully pushes open the cover. Inside was a sensor device. What surprised the woman was that she had seen it somewhere before. It was obvious that someone was trying to kill her. The woman could only emphasize again to the children in the back row not to move. By now, five minutes have passed. The woman called her co-workers for help, describing the situation in detail. A few minutes later, David arrived with specialized equipment for mine clearance. He quickly assembled the equipment with skillful hands. He then searches the underside of the car. The first step is to determine the exact location of the minefield. Then he puts a mobile detector underneath the car. As the equipment gets closer to the target, they finally find the main control box for the timing module. But David is confused. He showed the photo to the woman. It turns out that this module is also manufactured by his own company. The woman hesitated for a while and then called her boss. But to her surprise, the phone rang in the trunk. The woman asked her son to pull out the center seat. It turned out that the boss had been framed by someone else. At that moment, another colleague of the woman, Anna, arrived here. They had to dismantle the module. But what they didn't expect is that there are three different colored wires on the control panel. If they disconnect one of the wires, the countdown will stop. But the three of them disagreed. Probe slowly entered the bottom of the car. After a careful search, they finally found the location of the bomb's main control box. But there were three different colored wires on the board that controlled the countdown. The woman thinks the blue wire should be cut. David thought the yellow wire should be cut. But the woman was confined to the car and had no say in the matter. With less than four minutes left on the clock, they must act now. They used the robot to get to the control panel. Two minutes left. There's no time to lose. The woman in the car is very nervous. And David is sticking to his guns. He took control of the robot and cut the yellow wire. But to his surprise, the clock doesn't stop. <laughs> David didn't have time to think, he had to do it himself, but he can't tell if it's the blue wire or the green wire. At this point, everyone is incredibly nervous. If there's a mistake, everyone will die. There are still 59 seconds left, but David's arm suddenly shook. It's an occupational disease. Whenever he's nervous, his arm will shake. There are still 20 seconds left. Anna realizes that it's too late if she doesn't act. She went under the car too. The clock finally stops at 4 seconds. It turns out that cutting the green wire was the right thing to do, but they're only controlling the timing of the explosion. But the danger wasn't eliminated. All they had to do was roll up a window, open a door or suddenly lose weight, and the car would still detonate. Just then, there was a cry for help from the trunk. It turns out the boss isn't dead. The next step is to open the door. Anna used the x-ray device to scan the vehicle and lock the body's battery. If we destroy the battery pack, we can open the door, but only if the sensors in the storage box are destroyed. David told the woman that she could open the door by creating an instantaneous short between the transformer and the relay on the circuit board. But the woman can't move in the car, and she doesn't have any tools. It's very difficult for her to create an instantaneous short circuit on the circuit board. Coincidentally, the daughter in the back row just happened to bring a stationary box. Inside is a pair of scissors and a compass. With the tools, all we have to do now is short out the circuit within a second of contact. There can't be any mistake. With her years of experience, the woman succeeds in destroying the inductive circuit. The next step is to destroy the body's battery pack man puts a cannonball in the door of a car, and the woman in the car gives him a gas look. He then pinpoints the exact spot where he's going to blow. And the door opens, but everyone can't get out of the car right away. The weight of the car could be reduced and it would explode, so Anna got underneath the car and used the airbags to press on the side of the bomb. The maximum elastic weight can only be increased to 40 kilograms. In other words, the bomb won't explode if you take anything less than 40 kilograms out of the car. The two children in the back are both in the 40 kilogram range. But for safety's sake, the mother asked David to take her daughter out of the car first. But the mother's decision was strongly resented by the son. Now there are three other people in the car. By placing weights of the same weight on different parts of the car, all three people can get out of the car. But the problem is, the weights must be placed and the three people must get out of the car on the same timeline. After careful calculation, the maximum error must be within three seconds. That's the only way. Soon. Anna begins to position the weights ready to be dropped, because one of the weights had to be hung next to the bomb. David had to get under the car. Everything is ready. Then all three of them slowly sat down on the side of the car, ready to jump. But to everyone's surprise, the boy didn't jump. At the critical moment. David used both hands to hold the car to keep the weight balance. But what was so infuriating was that no matter how much the others tried to persuade him, the boy just sat there like a log and didn't move. It was only when David lost his strength that the boy reluctantly stepped out of the car. The woman and Anna tried to help but it was too late. As much as they wanted to, all they could do was watch. 